Hi there, my name is Jessica Crow, and I'm the founder of Apogee, which is a change management training and consulting firm. And this is Change Leader Insights, which is a podcast that I host on a monthly basis. I get the privilege of uh, speaking with people who are experts in change management, they're leaders in their organization, um, they have experience, opinions, insights on what it's like to lead and influence change at the individual team or organization level. And this month, I thought I would not only be the host, but the guest. And the reason for doing so is, uh, one, I am going to be celebrating four years in business next month, which is really, really exciting. and. Also because I teach yoga on the side and I will often incorporate themes and messages that I need to hear myself. So I wanted to spend some time talking a little bit about an article that I recently wrote. It's publishing um, in Apogee's newsletter. You can go check out our blog page. It's posted there too. And it's about finding joy in the process of change. And the reason this is relevant for me now, um, kind of where I'm at in the life cycle of my business, is that there are some changes that I want to make that initially I was dreading. I was overwhelmed by the idea of having to go back to the drawing board in some ways, of having to take on a big project. And it was one that in previous years, I hadn't loved the process. And I compared it to the process of creating a class for yoga. And I would, you know, I love that process. I lose myself in the, you know, I find myself in flow, I guess is what I like to say, uh, coming up with the sequence and picking the music and thinking about the message and really bringing it all together. And I wanted to have that same experience with some of the work that I was doing for Apogee. And I really love Apogee. I love being a change management um, trainer. I love doing change management consulting, but again, the things that I needed to tackle next that I want to tackle next in my business, um, I was really dreading and avoiding. And so I got to thinking about how can I make my experience of the things that I need to do for work be more aligned with doing the things that I find joy in, my hobbies, my side pursuits, and I realized there was a lot of relevance here for organizational change, team leaders, people leaders, project leaders. Um, so hopefully this message resonates with you. So when you go back to your organization, uh, back to your team, you can find ways to incorporate joy into the process of change. And so the first takeaway message that I think is important for uh, everyone to hear is that finding joy in the process starts with taking ownership of your joy. And what I mean by that is, you know, if we think about the term joy, the word joy, it refers to a state of being. It's a positive state of being. It's different than happiness, which is an emotion that is based on external factors, things happening around us, while joy is something that comes from within. And it comes from working on our goals or doing things that are in alignment with things we enjoy or find a sense of purpose in. Um, and so finding joy in the process of change, an organizational change, a team change, a process change, whatever it might be, means how do we take ownership for our experience? And to take ownership of your experience is choosing a mindset, an attitude, a stance of, of joy. And it also means connecting what you have to be doing or need to be doing back to your why. Why are you working at the organization you're working for? Why do you have the job or career that you do? Um, what gets you up in the morning? Even connecting it back to your core values. So for me, one of my core values is independence. And I have to remember that when I am working on some of those tasks and things that I don't want to tackle, that having Apogee gives me that feeling and sense of independence. And so when the going gets tough with, with the projects that I need to take on, I think, you know what, this is in line with one of my core values. And that brings me a sense of joy. It helps me get over that um, feeling of discomfort, of dread in some ways. Um, and it also reminds me that, again, being, having joy, feeling uh, being in that state of joy really is something that I am responsible for, not my husband, not the clients that I work with, not my children, not anybody outside of me. It comes from within and I am responsible for my joy. 
Um, the second piece is to focus on what you can control. So if there's something that we need to work on, tackle, address, overcome, deal with, it can feel overwhelming for a couple of reasons. Sometimes it feels like there's too many things to do and we get stuck in a paralysis of, of, of what do we do first? And then we just avoid the whole thing. Um, and the other reason is because change creates uncertainty and that uncertainty makes us feel unstable, uh, a lack of security, uh, a loss of, of feeling like we have control. So the best way to regain control, which is something that makes us feel stable and secure is to make choices and decisions. And these choices and decisions don't necessarily have to be related to the change that you have to take on or go through or lead. And what I mean by that is sometimes taking back control means choosing to take a break and going out and you know getting some exercise or going for a walk or stepping away from the experience. Taking control can mean talking to somebody you trust, um, a mentor, a friend, a boss, a peer, and sharing what you're feeling, your fears, your concerns, um, kind of asking for help. That is take making a decision and getting organized, kind of writing down all of the things that you need to do um, or, or are responsible for and taking time to break those activities down into smaller steps and then prioritizing those. That is a way to make decisions which makes us feel like we have a sense of control, even if the decision to change wasn't our choice to begin with. It was something that we were asked to change versus it was our great idea to change. Um, and the reason that's important too is when it's not something that we initiate, that we come up with, it comes from another team or another leader or whomever, it doesn't have that internal buy-in and motivation that is required for us to get going, to get started, or to sustain the things that we need to be doing to make the change a success. Um, it doesn't have that to begin with. And so finding joy in the process of change and that transition process means making choices and decisions, and they can be small choices and they can be big choices, but it gives us a sense of agency. So focus on what you can control. And then the last piece of finding joy in the process of change, and this could be making a needed change, um, unavoidable change, right? Is to focus on what you will learn from the experience. And that is something that I continuously come back to when I'm working on some area or aspect of what I do for my firm, um, the projects that I take on. The one of the big ones is going to be making some revisions to my change management training course. And there are moments where I'm like, oh, I don't want to have to go back to the drawing board on this. And I'm not necessarily going back to the drawing board, but the effort that's required is more than I'm currently um, applying today. I've gotten comfortable with the course as it is until recently, and now I want to revise it. Um, and going through that process of taking on and tackling that work is not something I'm always excited about until I reframe it. And I think about what am I going to learn from this? And things that are exciting me are, I'm going to be doing more research. I'm going to be learning more and reinforcing and validating the training and the learnings that are in the course. And I'll be sharing where my sources of research are so people can go and continue to do more research themselves. That excites me. That's going to be something that I look forward to as I take on this project. Um, learning more about how to leverage technology to convey information to adult learners and how to connect with people, whether it's through, you know, we all learn differently. So is it visual? Is it auditory? Is it kinesthetic where we have more activities integrated into the training? Um, so when I think about the skills that I'm going to develop and acquire, um, the things that I'm going to be learning about behavior change and the psychology of change and the emotions around uh, change, I'm, I'm excited about that. And I have to remember that and recall that in those moments where I'm doing the work or I need to be doing the work. And I realize I'm prioritizing some of the low hanging fruit because it's easier. It makes me feel productive, even though I'm not producing really anything meaningful at all. So um, that is, you know, those are messages that I need to hear 
right now. And so I thought I would share that with you in case you are experiencing change at work and you're dreading it, you're responsible for Im implementing a change and you're not looking forward to doing that. You want to make a change in your life. Uh, maybe it's personal or professional and it just feels overwhelming or like too much. Come back to those three principles of one, taking ownership of your joy, uh, making that decision to look at this from a different lens through a different lens. Um, there's a quote in the article where it talks about, uh, it's something from Abraham Lincoln said that most people are just about as happy as they make up their minds to be. The same would apply to joy. Be intentional about seeking out and finding your joy. The second is focusing on what you can control. When we feel like everything's not within our control, like change is happening to us, it can slow us down, stop us in our tracks and really inhibit progress. So either break down the change that needs to happen into smaller steps and make decisions around what you're going to do or make decisions that have nothing to do with the change, but give you a sense of um, control and agency and make you feel like you can tackle the work um, at some point. And then lastly, thinking about what you will learn or gain from the experience. Change includes discomfort. <laughs> Um, not all changes, but sometimes that learning process is challenging. The experience can be challenging, the feedback, the, you know, there's a lot of different reasons why change can be hard, but right around the corner from that discomfort is the growth, the insights, the things that help us develop, not only as professionals, but as human beings, um, the self-awareness, the, um, you know, there's just, there's a lot that we can learn from challenging change. And when you stay focused on what you will learn, whether it's something to do or not to do, uh, you're developing skills. Those are those are valuable insights that will make you a better human if you look for those lessons and you reflect on those lessons and you learn from uh, those lessons. So that's it. Taking ownership of your joy, finding, uh, focusing on what you can control and thinking about what you will learn out of the experience are ways to find joy in the process of change. And that is this month's podcast. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, learned something from it, or at least you heard a message that maybe you needed to hear today, this month, because you are going through or need to take on a change that you are just not excited about. So how can you find joy? How can you seek out and find joy in the change process? If this message resonated, resonated with you, um, let me know. We'd love to hear your feedback. Love to hear ways that you have been able to find joy in the process of change and we'll share them with our community. Thanks for tuning in and have a great rest of your day.